Hey everybody, my name is Mason Ku. I'm a lighting artist and I'll be providing feedback for July. Um, so we have a couple submissions uh, from people on the Discord, so I'm just going to get started. Uh, this one's from NH MHD Huron. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, so I took a look at some of the feedback that Quan gave you. Great job. I think it's really coming along. Um, I had a couple of things. So, you know, one thing that I find really important when you're looking at an image and looking at a reference image um, to kind of deconstruct, you know, the image as a whole is to really squint at the image. So, you know, you'll see this in reviews a lot. People will, everyone will be doing this, um, which is kind of funny, but it really helps to kind of, you know, get rid of all the details and see what's working with the image if the eye is going where you want it to go um, and how your value structure is working. So a way that we can kind of um, simulate that in Photoshop is with the mosaic filter, which is, I find very useful. It's up here inside of Pixelate. Um, so you can see how when you do that to these images, this is your image, um, you can see what's, what's going on in each image, right? So this reference image that you provided, you really are drawn to the middle here. Um, you can really see, you know, these lines pointing. It's vignetted around the edge, which really helps the eye go to the middle. Um, and I feel like here there's a lot of dark darks in the background that are really pulling away from, you know, what I think is supposed to be your focal point, which is the center. Um, so I did a couple paint overs uh, just so we can see, you know, feel free to take any of these ideas that you want. Um, these are just suggestions. So. At the end, in the end, it's your work of art, so you should um, proceed how you feel is right. So, um, if we unmosaic these, so let's see. Here's the paint over that I did, um, and I think it, it gets a little bit closer to the feeling of what this reference image is doing. It's a little dreamier, a little more, you know, romantic feeling. Um, I think originally, you know. A couple things with this is I think the darks back here are getting too dark and a lot of times you know we want to create depth in the image um, so what that means is that or part of what that means is that those dark darks in the background shouldn't be as dark as what's dark <laughs> as the shadows in the foreground so you know you see how this area here is super 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 dark um, and not only does that kind of like interrupt your eye over here, it also, you know, in real life, you would, you would think that this area gets more bounce from this light hitting this wall super hard. Um, so, you know, you can kind of see it here. There's a lot of light from this bouncing off of this wall here. Um, that's kind of affecting everywhere around it. And I think it would be really nice to kind of get that feeling, um, in your piece here. So uh, let's take a look at a couple things that I did here. So, you know, one thing that I was noticing right off the bat is that your the, the key light in your reference is, is greener, more yellow than what you have here. And, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think yours feels more like um, sunset. So there's a warmer light. Um, so you can keep this the way it is. I shifted it just ever so slightly. Hopefully you can see that a little bit greener just to feel more like sunlight and kind of get it a little bit away from, you know, a sort of colored um, artificial light. But, you know, if you want to keep this warm look, that's totally a stylistic choice. Um, the big thing here is what I was talking about earlier is kind of feeling more of that um, bounce from, from this light hitting this wall. Um, you kind of want to feel its influence on the areas around it. And there's only so much you can do with paint over, but you, I think you get the idea where, you know, you, you can put another light back there and sort of kiss in a brighter feeling. Um, oh, my cat just jumped down. <laughs> um, so I've kind of done it here where, you know, really affecting this middle part more. And kind of going along with that is, vignetting the outside. So this is something that, you know, 
certainly I do a lot in my shots. Um, I, I know a lot of people do. I think we had a talk, or I listened to a talk one time with the DP of Ford versus Ferrari, and he said, by default, you know, he just has a vignette in post production on every single shot, which, you know, I think is pretty interesting. Uh, it really helps to focus your eye to the middle, and sort of uh, let you not, you know, look at how interesting <laughs> these leaves are on the side. Um, so, you know, those two things I think can really help with the value structure here. Um, another thing you can see in this image, you know, you have this beam of, of light, um, which is beautiful, but it, it, it only happens because there's atmosphere, right, in the air. Um, there's volume in the air. So what that means is that if there's volume in the air back here, it should, your dark shouldn't get quite as dark as they're getting over here. Um, and you can kind of see it here where there you see how like the dark the dark darks of this background building here are more of a gray you know it's um it's really going to be affected by that atmosphere uh, this is what painters call atmospheric at atmospheric perspective um where stuff in the background kind of gets less contrasty um so just i just kissed it in just a little bit on top here so you can kind of feel that it's stepping backwards as you go into the image. Um, here's another pass of even more bounce from this light here. Um, I think what you have here is super beautiful. I think, you know, either cheating the render or, or you know, increasing the amount of, of indif indirect coming from the light hitting this wall, I think will really help you to um, really draw the eye into that image. And the other thing I think is, you know, this is more of a technical thing. It's a little bit distracting that there's this um, really dark wall back here, um, as well as this. I'm not sure what's going on down here, but it is a little bit distracting to look at. You know, my eye sort of wants to look at this beautiful part here, but I keep getting a little bit distracted by how bright this thing is here. So I think just patching up, you know, fixing this texture issue and and patching up this will really help to kind of make it less distracting. And all of that stuff I think really matters, right? You, at least for, for film, you really want the audience to look at where you want them to look in the image. You know, oftentimes we don't get a lot of time. Maybe a shot is one second or two seconds long. And you really want them to pay attention to uh, what the story is, right? So in my opinion, the story here is, is, you know, this shaft, beautiful shaft of light coming in and eliminating this alley. And that's what you really wanted to look at. So eliminating all other distractions in the image from your story point, I think will really help. Um, so now if we go back to the mosaic image, um, the mosaic reference up here, and then we look at the paint over mosaic, you know, I think, I think it does get closer to what this reference image is, um, just by kind of reordering your value structure here. So keeping things lighter in the middle. Um, and again, this is for this image in particular, for this reference in particular. You know, there's a million things that can be considered right. Um, so this is my opinion about this image. But, you know, I think if you're trying to match the reference, you sort of want to draw the eye to the middle and then away from the sides of the image. Awesome, hopefully that helped. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your progress on this. Uh, here it is again, before and after. Great, and uh, one more here from Mariana. Um, great start to this, I think, uh, it's really successful in, in the composition, and I love the way that you you lit it to begin with. Um, I had a couple of suggestions, and again, you know, this is going off of what appeals to you. You know, like I said, everyone has different taste. Not not everything is right or wrong. Um, so looking at this reference image, again, like I like I. Um, had said in the past, in the piece before this, 
it really helps just squint your eye. Um, if you wear glasses, you could just take off your glasses. Uh, but I like this mosaic to kind of really visualize what's going on here. Um, so, you know, first thing right off the bat is your sky color. I think that's the thing that's, I know just the first and is the most distracting to me. Um, I think it just doesn't feel like this time of day because it's a little bit too dark. Um, so, you know, going in and, and changing your sky dome, I think will really go a long way to help it feel cohesive. Um, one other thing that I can't do in the paint over, but um, I think is important is, you know, I, I think your image feels a little bit like it's a miniature. Um, the scale feels very small. So, you know, and I, I think the reason for that is your depth of field. Um, this is quite a long ways here, but you know, lenses, camera lenses don't fall off with their depth of field like this. You see how blurry this pole is back here. Um, and even back here, it, it feels like the depth of field is, is um, changing too quickly in the image. So I might take a look at, you know, some uh, Western movies or really any movie um, or take some reference of how the depth of field falls off. So you might want to change your f-stop on your camera to sort of um, match a more realistic fall off of the depth of field. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask on the Discord. Um, so getting along with the paint over here, I think I, I did do a quick sort of uh, brightening of the sky. And I think that, you know, just that, it's a little <laughs> weird around the edges, but just that I think makes a huge difference. I think it's, you know, a lot closer to the reference and it's a lot more, you know, it looks like the time of day. Um, one other thing with the sky is that it's, it looks like the clouds are being lit from the opposite direction. So if you could find a different sky image where the lighting of the clouds is matching the lighting of your um, of your scene, I think that would help a lot, because you know it's it's not something that someone would notice right away, but it might just be like, why is this kind of strange? You know, they might be thinking that in their mind, and um, I think it'd be useful to kind of put everything uh, together more. So one thing that's in your reference that I think is really cool is these really long shadows, right? And I think that goes along with your sort of Western theme here. So I might play around, you know, if I were you, play around with moving the sun and kind of elongating these shadows. I just did a quick like um, paint over here of maybe if you move the sun, you know, back here, more of at a raking angle like it is here, you get longer shadows and a more interesting look. And you might be able to sort of break up how bright this middle part is. Um, just make things a little bit more interesting in the middle here. Um, and the other thing is, you can see how much atmosphere there is back here in the reference image. Um, and that really helps to sell the sense of depth. This church seems pretty far away, but look how clear it is, right? Like, it's sharp and clear, and this horse is super clear. You kind of I think it, it might help to put a little bit of volume back there um, just to step back the values a little bit and just make sure that you know your darks in the foreground are darker than your darks in the background. Um, and really study this reference image because you can see here, you know, look how dark these nice shadows get. And as you get as you go back, you know, these are still in the sun and they're still getting you know this dark of shadows in the back but they're pushed back by atmosphere in front of it so um just a suggestion i think that might help to sort of uh lend depth to your image um cool yeah i think after that we can you know if you move the sun and and you um kind of play around with the camera depth of field we can talk more about you know what your next steps might be but 
um, I think this is an awesome start, and I think you know I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with it. Thank you.